is Shauna Etienne, New Jersey's number one marriage counselor. And today I want to demonstrate with you what a session that I had earlier with one of my clients. And the question she asked me was, how does she begin the process of changing her negative behavior? So I left her with this statement. Words are symbols. And when you don't have the words to say to describe your emotions, you will act out. Okay? So I just want you to keep that in mind that words are symbols. And when we don't have the words to say to describe our emotions, we will act out. Okay, so basically this is what a, demonstra a demonstration of what I did with her. I put client as opposed to her name, so you won't know who she is, and I'm keeping this confidential. But what I asked her was, what were some contributing stressors in her life? And she came up with four different stressors that she's dealing with. First stressor of hers is parenting. She's a single parent, she doesn't have much income, and she is a little bit stressed that she's not able to provide her daughter the lifestyle that she feels her daughter deserves, okay? So that really does cause some stress in her life. Followed by her apartment situation. This is a girl who, she doesn't make enough money and she fell behind on her rent and with the late fees and the lawyer fees to avoid eviction, she cannot afford the back payment. So now she has to move out of her apartment, which she doesn't have the money to move. So as you know what I'm saying with finances, it's gonna cause more stress in her life. Her job. Because she doesn't have an education, a formal education such as a bachelor's degree or a master's degree or higher, she is left to have jobs that don't pay her enough that she needs to live a quality life. So she's now frustrated with her job situation. And lastly, her bills. She has a lot of bills, an abundance of bills and not enough money to pay it. So you can understand how that too is a contributing stressor. So what I did with her is I asked her to assign her emotions to these situations because what I noticed is a lot of people have a hard time identifying their emotions and instead they act out with whatever behavior it is, maybe getting angry, yelling, becoming abrupt, rude, sarcastic, disengaged, isolated, whatever the behavior is, they think that that's the emotion but it's not. And part of doing the work of transformation, you have to be able to identify your emotions. So let's take it to the next thing. In her parenting situation, she recognizes that her emotions that are associated with her stress about parenting, she becomes moody, right? And when she becomes moody, she begins to act out by yelling at her daughter. Hurry up. Didn't I tell you to put your clothes on? You're going to make me late. Go to bed. Whatever kind of behavior that she has, it really does not have anything to do with her daughter. But because she's not identifying her emotions associated with it, She's yelling, which in turn her daughter interprets this behavior as though she did something bad or something wrong. I hope this is making sense for you, okay? As far as her apartment situation, her emotion is she's anxious, but she's unaware that she has a lot of anxiety. People don't just turn around and say, I'm very anxious today. I would like my clients to be able to say it because it will make my job a lot easier, but they don't. They don't say that. Instead, she goes out drinking, right? Not recognizing that drinking is going to make her problems worse, right? So you, you got to spend money to drink. And if you don't have money to pay your bills, but you got money to pay, to pay for alcohol, it's going to create more stress in your life. Drinking is dangerous when you're using it as a, 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 a healing process or to numb the pain that you're experiencing. Because A, one thing is going to happen. One of many things are going to happen. Maybe she'll get a DUI, DWI. Maybe she might um, get in an accident or be charged with vehicular manslaughter, or even worse, have unprotected sex and contract STD. Whatever the case is, drinking is not the issue, okay? So she has to be able to identify that she's anxious about her apartment situation. With her job situation, she expresses herself through anger. She's very angry, but instead of saying and taking ownership that I am angry, she acts out by isolating herself from her coworkers. The type of job she has requires her to be a team player, but instead she's become autonomous and in isolation. So that kind of behavior can actually harm her. And when I asked her why was she angry, when we got to the root of her emotion, her anger comes because the job had promised her a promotion and she never got it, right? And she feels that the promotion will help her in a lot of other areas, the apartment, the bills, with her parenting, because she needs the extra money. So instead of communicating, with her supervisor or the executive director of the organization, she instead isolate herself. So you want a promotion, but you're no longer a team player. And it's going to harm you. So you need to be able to identify the emotion that
that's associated with the stressor in your life so you can start the conversation. You need to have that dialogue, okay? You need to be able to say to Mr. or Mrs. Boss, I'm feeling a little bit angry right now and it's causing me to isolate myself and my team because when we last spoke, I was offered a position, but yet I've never started and it's making me lose hope. I've always imagined myself growing with this organization. I see myself being promoted and being with the organization, but that didn't happen. And I'm starting to feel myself become bitter and angry. That's a whole different conversation you can now have with your boss because your boss can work with that. Especially they thought that you qualified and you were good enough for the position in the first place. They can work with that. They can't work with you isolating yourself. They can't work with you withdrawing. They can't work with you refusing to be a team player. It's going to go against you. And lastly, when, with this, the, the point I'm making about her bills, her emotion, she says she feels is anger. She's anxious. She becomes frustrated. And most important, she becomes sad. She experiences depression. But I had to pull those emotions out of her. What she was able to identify with her negative behavior is she starts to mismanage her money. So she starts to go shopping and she justifies it. Well, I don't want my daughter to suffer. So although my light bill is due, my daughter needs a pair of Jordans. You understand? And it's mismanaging the money and it doesn't actually help with her bills. So I say what is to say to you guys, you have to be able to identify your emotions. All right? Because when you're acting out, it's because you don't have the words that are necessary to describe what you're feeling. Just think of the game charades. If I show you the card and I say, you are the act out cat, you can't use your words, right? So you have to get on your knees, lick your hand, pull, so that people that's watching you can guess that you're being a cat. But when you're feeling angry, anxious, moody, depressed, you're acting this out and you're leaving everybody else to guess what's going on. Do you think they're going to say, oh, she's just a little bit anxious because she didn't pay her bills? That's not what they're going to say. They're going to see you as angry or as an alcoholic or you can't control your emotion, or she's not a team player, or she has poor money management, that's why she's in her situation. They're not going to see your underlying pain. They're going to pass a lot of judgment on you based on the energy you're putting out, okay? So again, I leave you with words or symbols. And when you don't have the words to describe your emotions, you begin to act out.